Welcome back to the Hardware Unbox News Corner. Yes, we're back for a news recap video. We've finally found some time in our schedule for one of these. It's been an insanely busy period for most tech reviewers over the last few months with the launches of the GeForce RTX 30 series, Zen 3 processors, and now the RX 6000 series from AMD. I hope you guys have been enjoying the content, but I guess it's time to give Steve a short rest, maybe a couple of hours before getting right back into it. The first topic that I wanted to discuss in this video is the situation surrounding the Radeon RX 6000 series launch. When we're preparing our reviews before the NDA lifts, it's always pretty difficult for us to get a clear read on how these products will fare at launch. But now the dust has settled over the last 48 hours, we have a much better idea. So naturally, the demand for these products was sky high. High-end GPUs with performance better than previous generation cards, huge performance leaps within the AMD ecosystem, and the lack of GeForce 30 series products in the market all contributed to this. So it wasn't really a surprise to see these cards sell out very quickly, you know, crash lots of online retails and so on. Almost every GPU launch over the last few years has sold out instantly. If anything, that's a good thing as it tells the company that people actually want to buy the product. And like with the 30 series launch, a few of the members in our Discord community that we've been chatting to were able to buy one, but they did have to get in pretty quick. The question from here is, you know, what is the stock situation looking like for RDNA 2 GPUs? How was the situation at launch and what will it be like moving forward? We've put that question to a range of retailers and board partners over the last few days and Unfortunately, we don't have much good news to share here. The people we spoke to are, as you might imagine, more closely aligned with the Australian market, but I think there are still some good insights to share here. Firstly, I think everyone is aware now that launch day stock was atrocious. We're talking ampere level bad. Many retailers and physical locations have talked about getting only double digit numbers for their store. I think we heard this a lot of times at places including Micro Center. So yeah, terrible stock levels at launch with everything selling out practically straight away. What we are hearing beyond this is not good news either for people wanting to buy a Radeon GPU or really any GPU for that matter, considering Nvidia's issues as well. Basically, retailers are currently struggling to place any orders of significant quantities for RX 6000 series GPUs because they simply aren't available. One retailer told us the situation is actually looking worse than with Ampere, with fewer cards available to order, so that's really not a good thing to hear. At this stage, it doesn't sound like there is much promise of big shipments just days or weeks away. It's sounding more like stock issues will continue well into the future. It's also not sounding promising when it comes to AIBs. We know the launch of custom Radeon RX 6800 and 6800 XT models is expected next week. However, we've heard from several major partners that this date is really not feasible for them. This issue in particular appears to be more affecting AMD's non-exclusive partners, so companies like ASUS, Gigabyte, and MSI, than it is their exclusive brands like Sapphire, XFX, and PowerColor. I'm not going to talk specifics about what brand is saying what, but one brand in particular told us their allocation of Radeon GPUs for the near future is very, very low and well below what they need to fulfill expected demand. We don't have a great deal of insight into the market as a whole, but from what we are hearing, AMD are allocating the bulk of their supply to their exclusive partners over partners that work with both AMD and NVIDIA. This isn't necessarily a dodgy or unreasonable thing from AMD, as our own Amazon data, for example, shows that PowerColor and Sapphire are significantly more popular than other brands when it comes to AMD GPUs. But with such limited supply, it seems that this prioritization has caused a severe lack of allocation for non-exclusive partners. What this means for these brands is that their custom designs may not be ready next week or go on sale for quite some time. One brand told us their cards won't be ready until mid-December going on current allocations, even though the brand is expected to announce their products well before then. If we do see custom cards available next week, they are most likely to be from AMD exclusive partners. Overall though, it doesn't really sound like the current supply situation will magically be alleviated when custom cards launch. In fact, it really seems as though stock will remain at a pretty low level for some time. We'll likely get cards from brands like PowerColor and XFX first at limited stock levels, and then cards from non-exclusive brands like say yeah, MSIs and ASUSes later on. How many weeks it will take for stock to rise to a reasonable level is very unclear, so buyers I think at this occasion will need to be quite patient. 
Again, stock issues around launch are very common for GPU launches. In fact, we've seen this with nearly every GPU launch in recent memory. The key factor is whether we get consistent shipments of new GPUs in to keep stock flowing, and what stock levels are looking like in about a month's time once the initial wave has died down. Nvidia has failed badly on this front with massive shortages still occurring more than a month after the launch of the RTX 3080, and with AMD Radeon GPUs, it seems they're headed for a similar fate, which is quite frustrating, disappointing, and yeah, a bit, bit disastrous for the company. AMD didn't make matters any better for them by having marketing executives like Frank Azor mouthing off on Twitter and criticizing Nvidia's stock issues, or just posting about being able to buy a GPU when clearly the majority of people weren't able to. These sorts of things hurt the brand, and AMD is really better off not saying anything, especially when internally they'd have a very good idea of stock issues and what the reception to that would be like. Really, if you don't have good information to share, don't mislead the public, just say nothing. That's better than I think what has happened here. As for why AMD is struggling to supply RDNA 2 GPUs, it's a pretty simple one. AMD are currently trying to manufacture a very high number of products on TSMC's 7 nanometer node, and there are only so many wafers to go around. Between semi-custom silicon for the new consoles, Zen 3 CPUs, RDNA 2 GPUs, Renoir APUs, and older products, supply there is very tight. In fact, basically all of these categories, including Renoir, have seen supply issues, with Zen 3 perhaps faring the best, as it sounds like there was decent availability for a product like the Ryzen 5 5600X at launch, all things considered. On the one hand, AMD will be wanting to prioritize high margin products for 7 nanometer. New Ryzen CPUs are more likely to be high margin than new GPUs, so it's not overly surprising to see Ryzen preferred over Radeon. On the other hand, AMD missed a big trick here with Nvidia's own supply issues. Had they been able to ship a significant number of 6000 series GPUs while Nvidia is floundering, they could have captured a decent amount of sales and gained some nice marketing and market share along the way, but unfortunately that hasn't happened. For us, we're going to keep evaluating the stock situation and continue talking to people in the industry to see how things are progressing with all brands. Right now, it seems like the real test will be early in January. What will stock look like then? Will AMD or Nvidia GPUs be more readily available? We just don't know. Continuing this discussion into supply issues, this week Nvidia revealed that they don't expect their supply constraints to be alleviated for another few months. Speaking on an investor call, Chief Financial Officer Colette Kress stated that Given industry-wide capacity constraints and long cycle times, it may take a few more months for product availability to catch up with demand. CEO Jensen Huang also commented on the situation, saying, We would appreciate shorter cycle times, we would appreciate more agile supply chains, but you know the world is constrained at the moment, and so we just have to make the best of it. With companies also facing sky-high demand, much higher than usual due to the global pandemic, it's been a big crunch for companies like Nvidia where supply is lower than usual and demand is higher than usual, so not a great situation to be in. So like what we've just been talking about with AMD GPUs, we really don't expect these supply problems to be resolved for many months, and it will take a lot of patience on the part of prospective buyers. Gamers aren't the most patient bunch out there, so that will be interesting. But in any case, with some retailers still unable to fulfill even day one orders, yeah, this just isn't going to go away anytime soon. Changing gears now, ASRock are the first company to release beta BIOSes supporting Ryzen 5000 processors for their B450 motherboards. AMD's official position is these BIOS updates won't be ready until January 2021. However, ASRock seemed to have jumped the gun and posted some BIOS updates to their website for various B450 motherboards. According to ASRock's news release, what appears to be their entire B450 lineup will support Ryzen 5000 processors, although in many instances you'll need an existing Ryzen CPU to flash the required BIOS update. And Nantech are reporting that some of the BIOS updates have been pulled from ASRock's website, although as far as we can tell all the updates are still live. We haven't had time to test these updates yet, but it appears as though the BIOS updates include a GSA 1.1.0.0, which is the version we've already seen brought across to 500 series motherboards at the launch of Zen 3. ASRock's product page doesn't mention much on whether older CPU support has had to be removed to fit the Zen 3 code in, so we'll have to wait and see how that progresses as this situation is quite new. 
What we don't know is whether this move is actually sanctioned by AMD. At the launch of Zen 3, AMD was pretty insistent that Zen 3 updates would come first to 500 series motherboards, while 400 series owners would have to wait until January 2021. Their slide says the first beta releases will start in January, while the updates themselves are currently under development. Knowing ASRock and how they've been a bit cheeky with various features over the years, it's possible ASRock have just jumped the gun here against AMD's will, so we might see some of these updates pulled in the near future. That's something to look out for. AMD today has released a bizarre ray tracing demo called Hangar 21. Rather than making this demo available for people to download and actually run on their fancy new 6000 series GPUs, all AMD has done is upload this video to YouTube at 1080p 60fps running on an RX 6900 XT. This honestly doesn't make a lot of sense as we've already seen what ray tracing can do in the past and Nvidia has already made their demos available for download. The demo does use a variety of features like DirectX ray tracing, fidelity FX denoising, and variable rate shading, but again, it's just a video of a demo that AMD made, not something you can actually run. It's also honestly not that impressive. I think we've seen more impressive visuals from other engine demos like Unreal Engine 5 or even some of the Nvidia's initial ray tracing stuff like the Star Wars demo. It's pretty unusual that AMD would release this in this way. Um, I think they still have a fair bit of work to do to convince us that their ray tracing implementation is the best out there. Rounding this video out with two data center GPU announcements. The first one is Nvidia announcing a new variant of their massive A100 accelerator, which has been upgraded with a huge 80 gigabytes of HBM2E memory. The general specifications for the board remain the same. So we're still seeing 6912 FP32 CUDA cores at the same clock speeds and 400 watt board power ratings, but the memory capacity has been doubled. On top of this, the 80 gig model will also increase memory bandwidth from 1.6 to 2 terabytes per second on a 5120 bit bus. This is big news for data center applications that rely on huge VRAM buffers for processing work. 40 gigabytes already sounds massive, but 80 gig could be the difference between a functional and non functional workload. With that said, expect the 80 gig version of the A100 to be insanely expensive. We're already talking about an 826 square millimeter die, and now with 80 gigabytes of HBM2E on board, that's gotta be a mind-blowingly expensive product to make. In other data center news, AMD has unveiled their first cDNA product, the Instinct MI100. As a refresher, cDNA is AMD's compute-focused alternative to rDNA, designed specifically for data center and compute workloads. The MI100 is an accelerator card that AMD are claiming is the most powerful in the world for FP64 compute, with 11.5 teraflops of performance, which is higher than the 9.7 teraflops NVIDIA offer with the A100. The MI100 packs a massive 120 compute units, 40 higher than their flagship gaming products like the RX 6900 XT, and it does so with 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory and a 300 watt TDP. It's a passively cooled card, so it requires airflow provided by the rest of the server configuration. While AMD are claiming class leading performance for FP64 and higher than A100 levels of FP32 performance, the MI100 is not as well suited to lower levels of precision like FP16 or INT8, with Nvidia's tensor cores providing much better performance in that area. That's it for this week's News Corner. If you're interested in our news coverage, which I guess is happening less frequently these days, but we still do it from time to time, uh, you can subscribe to the channel, put on the bell icon, all that sort of thing. If you also want to support our videos and our testing, bench marks, all that sort of thing. We have our float plane and Patreon pages. Links to that are in the description below. Sign up, get access to Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, all that sort of thing. That's it. I'll catch you in the next one.